So, today what I'm going to try to do is talk a little bit about the differences between this Mustang, which is the Hertz Penske Edition GT, um, as opposed to the V6 I used to own. I did a video introducing this car to, to the channel and to myself, um, so I'll link it down below. I'm just going to try to talk about the little differences that I've spotted now that I've been driving it for a few days. Not as new to me as it used to be. That's what we're going to do. So let's start her up. That sound never gets old. It's kind of bright out. Jesus, those walnuts are serious business. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing that I want to talk to you guys about is that there was a very noticeable difference in the suspension of the car. And what I mean when I say this is that it was a lot stiffer. This one. This one's a lot stiffer than my V6 Mustang was. And I'm guessing it has to do with the fact that this is a performance pack Mustang. I know it probably gives you some sort of stiffer suspension, some sort of gearing, and um, these little gauges up here that again you'll see in the video it's something that I noticed right away you know I had a couple of friends in here when I first got the car and they noticed it too um, one of them even asked me if I was gonna try to soften the suspension of this car but I honestly don't think it's a big deal I mean it doesn't bother me that much um, yeah I feel you know for everyday driving I feel a lot of the bumps and little you know imperfections in the road but it's not really that big of an issue for me personally if I were ever to track the car or do any sort of performance driving um, it becomes a safety issue if I were to soften the suspension. It would give the car a little more body roll and stuff like that. A Hellcat Charger might have just driven by. And I know I just mentioned something about um, the performance back giving you some extra gauges in here, which is your oil pressure, your oil temperature, and I believe some sort of accelerometer. I don't know exactly what it is. I'll probably research it before I edit and I'll put a little, you know, disclaimer on the video. <laughs> So yeah, that's the biggest and most obvious uh, difference because that's part of a package. Another difference that I noticed is the dash pad itself. It's a little softer on the 2014. Um, the dash pad, you know, that surrounds the center console and goes over top of the, of the dashboard. The material is softer. I'm not sure if it has to do with wearing down. This one has less miles, so I wouldn't think so. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but it is softer on this car than it was on the 2013. Another difference, which is another obvious big difference, and I think it has to do more with packaging or options, is these Recaro seats. I was kind of on the fence about them, just because looking at them, I guess they just didn't look that comfortable, but I'm actually pleasantly surprised with them. I might say they're even more comfortable than the regular seats that Mustangs come with. They hold you in nicely without being too tight. I fit fine in these seats. My father, he fits fine. I have a bigger friend and he fits fine, he doesn't complain about the seats. These Recaro bucket seats on these Mustangs are actually quite comfortable. Another difference in the interior of this car as opposed to the V6 is that this car has the touchscreen navigation on it. Now, I haven't really fit a lot with the navigation, to be honest. If I ever do need a GPS, I just usually use my phone. Um, it seems to work pretty well. But it has it's playing sometimes on the screen, regardless of if I have it planned on a certain route or not, and it seems pretty accurate. It hasn't given me any major issues, any false information or stuff like that, so. Another difference, and this I know for a fact has to do with the years, is the gauge halos. The 2013 ones are a lot bigger as opposed to these. These are a little more discreet, and you can still change the colors, and they're still good looking. And I think it's an improvement over the 2013 because I had to turn the gauge brightness down a little bit on the 2013 at night because it was really in your face and it was kind of blinding sometimes. But these, I find I can put them at the highest setting of brightness and they're fine. They don't bother me. Sometimes the 2013s kind of glared on the windshield as well. And these are fine. They don't do any of that. Another difference, and this is just, it's not a model thing. It's just, I guess it works a little better here. It might be. They might have corrected it or it might have just been my V6 Mustang. The D-pad that you use to go through the menus and the gauges, it's a lot more accurate. I found the, in the V6, a lot of times if I hit up or down, it would kind of scroll between menus instead of going up and down. I guess it was a little faulty. It's a lot more accurate here. The buttons on the steering wheel aren't as clicky as the ones on the V6. They weren't very responsive on the V6. I had to kind of press on them hard. But this 2014 wheel, the buttons are a lot more responsive and we don't have to press as hard for them to work right. There's the little odds and ends here and there. The back seats, I think, they're kind of a little different when it comes to the headrest and stuff like that, the way they fold down. But nothing too obvious. It's a carryover model, so they're gonna be similar. Just little things that I noticed that may or may not be a model thing or just 
car to car, they're different. This car is actually quite a bit lower than the V6. And again, I think that has to do more with the performance pack. I haven't run into many issues about it yet. No scraping, nothing of that nature. It's definitely something that I have noticed. The place I live in doesn't really have too many road changes, so I don't see it being that much of an issue. Maybe speed bumps here and there or parking. I try to keep away from the concrete stops on the parking spaces as much as I can because of how low this car is. And it has a bigger splitter on the front, so. I just have to keep that in mind. I haven't had any major issues, it's just quite a bit lower than the V6. I realized it, but I didn't think it was a big issue, and so far it hasn't been, so I'm, I'm happy about that. I know I mentioned this as far as the interior differences earlier. I just want to touch about it a little more. This car has an infotainment system that's touchscreen based, as opposed to my 2013 Mustang, which was kind of like the base radio. It had a premium sound system, but it wasn't a touchscreen anything. A lot of people complain about these sync systems on these older Mustangs, you know, quote unquote, it's 2014, so three or four years old. Um, I don't have any major complaints about it. It's kind of counterintuitive in some points. There's definitely a learning curve about it. But overall, I don't find any major issues, like I said. The navigation, the GPS, it, it seems to work fine for me. The AC controls take a little getting used to, but once you get the hang of it, it's pretty self-explanatory, as well as the audio and the syncing of the Bluetooth devices and all that stuff. I can't really complain about it. It's functional, like I said, there's a learning curve, but once you get it, pretty smooth. I don't have any major issues with it. I know a lot of people do. That's just my experience with it, so. Another difference between the V6 and the GT, obviously, because, you know, being a V8, is the acceleration is a lot quicker. It's a touchier gas pedal. You don't have to get on it as hard to get up to speed without even giving it gas. I notice it's a lot quicker to start moving, just being in drive as opposed to the V6. I put it up on some ramps because I had to fix a little issue. I'll actually show a clip of what the issue was right now. you can appreciate that but it's really loose so I'm gonna try to figure out what's wrong with it driver and passenger side they're both held up by these little plastic push-up rivets kind of things and the ones on the passenger side it's missing one or two and they're all kind of worn down you can see kind of how it's worn that's how most of them are so I'm gonna go and see if I can find them it looks like I found what I was looking for these little guys So yeah, I had to fix that issue. I had it up in the ramps and I didn't even have to put any gas. Uh, I have had the V6 on ramps a few times and I always had to give it a little bit of gas to get them up there. But this one, I just had to let go of the brake a little and it crawled right up those ramps, no problem. Another thing that I'd like to talk about is the exhaust. Being a V8, it's gonna be a louder exhaust anyway than a V6. This exhaust borrows the mufflers from the GT500. Now, don't quote me on that, I'm not sure. I know this has quad rear exhaust, it's the same as the GT500s of this this model year. There are four mufflers I, I looked under there, so I'm thinking it borrows the GT500 mufflers, which make it even a little bit louder. As far as drone in the cabin goes, I'm, I'm not, I don't know if these cameras are picking it up or anything, but it's not bad still have conversations in here. You don't have to yell, but it is definitely a very deep, throaty sound, and I like that. I don't like the raspy exhaust. That popping and the rasping, it's not my style. I like low exhaust, just throaty, deep exhaust. That's the kind of notes that I like. Um, so right now, I'm doing exactly 45 miles an hour. As you guys can hear, the drone is not bad in the cabin. I'm not having to yell over it to try to, you know, talk to you guys or if I'm having a conversation with another passenger. So right now I'm turning about 1500 RPM at 45 miles an hour, so it's not loud, it's not obnoxious. It's a nice place to be in. Now there is just one more thing that I want to do before we end this video, is I want to show you what the cabin sounds like at highway speeds, the interstate. So that's what we're going to do. I'm, I'm getting on the interstate now. Here we go. miles an hour as you can hear the drone is a little more at highway speeds not terrible it's definitely a lot more noticeable than the v6 and it's not bad I still don't have to yell and right now I'm obviously talking louder because I'm recording a video and I usually do that and you can ask it probably any creator they probably raise their voice when they're recording it's still a manageable noise it's not bad while we're 
strong interstate, I will say. This car feels a lot more planted than the V6, a lot more stable. Not that the V6 really didn't feel good because it, it felt fine, but I don't know if it's just because it's a performance-oriented car. It just feels a lot more planted. It doesn't feel as wobbly or as insecure. It inspires confidence when you're driving it. And the stiffer suspension definitely helps a lot too. I don't feel it as body rolling when I do lane switches or stuff. It just feels like it's gonna stick to the ground. It just feels more at home, more like it knows what it's gonna do. It's up for the challenge of high speeds. I really like it. That's the end of my little rant here about the differences between this car and the car that I used to own, the V6 Mustang. Yeah, I really have nothing much more to say other than, you know, thanks for watching and um, take it easy. What do you got that? Okay, we're good.